My name is Kintur Sangvi. Uh, I'm an interventional cardiologist. I am also director of uh, affiliation with the Cleveland Clinic for the Borough Heart and Lung Center, and I'm associate medical director of the interventional cardiology and endovascular medicine department. Uh, this hospital is located in New Jersey, and it's affiliated with Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, where I serve as a professor of medicine. So cardiovascular disease uh, was remaining number one cause for death in the developed world, in the Western world. Uh, it has emerged to become the most leading cause of death in India. Um, over the last um, three or four decades, we have seen uh, um, an evolution also in terms of uh, disease process and the people involved by the disease process. So what has happened in Western world is Though coronary artery disease still remains number one cause for death, we have overcome a lot on prevention and also on treatment. So the patients are surviving much longer. Uh, now my average patient that comes into the cath lab, their mean age is about 73 and 74. So with the, all the invention in terms of preventive care, education about it and its prevalence in the society, in the Western world, the patients or the population's life expectancy has grown significantly. We have more patients survive the heart attack. We have more patients who are now at older age and they have heart failure, uh, but they are still managed. So there is a big change in that direction. While in India, what has happened uh, that the number of patients suffering from coronary heart disease has grown and it's, it's really happening at a very early age. It's really very concerning. It's almost an epidemic. I think the last data from 2017, 32% of the death happens from coronary artery disease. And this is only by the segmental uh, review. So it's not like we don't have a nationwide system or registry like in England. There is something called NHS in the United States. There is something called NCDR where every patient that suffers from the heart attack and they go through the procedure, it's registered. Here we have this data from some small segments where it was a sample examination. So there is a possibility and potential that there is even more patients suffering from coronary artery disease, heart attack, and heart rela attack related death. About last 10 years, um, the change has happened in the treatment to uh, treat this disease immensely. So one thing, big change that happened is in how we prevent the progression of blockage formation. As I discussed earlier, the, the risk factors are the reason why blockage happens. Aging is the most important risk factor. As our age increases, there is more chances of having blockage formation. So the invention that has happened or the treatment changes that has happened is multifactorial to treat the coronary artery disease. The most important thing is always prevention is better than cure. So in the prevention aspect, the diabetes care has improved. There are about different three or four pathways to control the sugar level, which progresses coronary artery disease. The cholesterol management has become um, very efficient. We have now multiple evidence that there are vessel inflammation or artery inflammation reduced by cholesterol treatment also. There are newer cholesterol treatment molecules. The third place where it still needs a lot of work need to be done is the high blood pressure, which is also a very important cause. Um, and then when it comes to treatment, there has been a lot of advances. So before, if somebody had multiple vessel blockages, the only treatment was open heart surgery. Patient had to go through a cracking open of the chest and the surgeons used either the patient's own chest wall artery or wrist artery or the veins from the leg and used that as a bypass. So what they did is they basically a blocked artery, they just bypassed around it. As the treatment evolved, we became more efficient in treating this blockage without doing bypass surgery. The technology in terms of balloons, stent, stent is just a metal spring that keeps the artery open. That evolved to a great extent. Now the current generation of drug coated stent that we use, uh, they are very efficient and the chances of failure acutely with having a blood clot forming inside the stent is less than 1%. And chances of blockage coming back in first two to three years is less than 9%. So that treatment has advanced. We have also advanced multiple other devices which basically deals with 
more complex blockages, something we call bifurcation disease where the branch arteries are blocked. We can open them and treat them now. Uh, and that was used to be the reason to send the patient for open heart surgery. Similarly, there are devices that we can use to file the calcium inside the artery, make it into small dust, and then we can open up the blocked artery with the stent. There are a lot of imaging device evolution. And more than that, there is also physiologic understanding of the blockage. Before what happened was when we see a blockage, we thought this blockage could be causing patient trouble and we stented that blockage. Now we are using physiology of the heart artery very efficiently to understand which blockage needs to be treated. Just by treating only the blockage that needs to be treated, we are improving the life expectancy and events for the patient. So patients are suffering less chances of heart attack or suffering less chances of requiring stenting procedure. So if you do a blockage that stent, if you treat a blockage, which is physiologically not bad, then you are going to cause harm to the patient. So this is all the new understanding which has really improved outcome and life expectancy of the patients that are going through the cath lab. Um, there is also evolution happen in how we do the procedure. So 10 years ago, majority of these procedures were done through the groin artery. Uh, groin artery was making it difficult for the patients because they have to lie down flat. The anatomy was very different. There is a lot more chance to bleed. The bleeding complication was very high. Uh, when I say very high, it isn't compared to the wrist artery. But uh, the bleeding complication was higher. Patients were requiring more blood transfusion, emergency surgery. Even there are examples or personal experiences of most of the interventional cardiologists that they lost the patient because the patient bled. Uh, inside the stomach cavity, something called peritoneal retroperitoneal bleed. So in last 10 to 20 years, the approach on how we get to the heart has changed. We started using more wrist artery worldwide because it was very obvious that it reduces the bleeding risk as it is right in front of the bone. It is very superficial artery and there is no space to bleed around there. There is no nerve there. You cannot damage a nerve and the patients can sit up right away and ambulate very soon. So how we did stent was, has also changed. Before we used to do it through the groin, patients were staying overnight in the hospital. Now in my hospital, on an elective stent procedure, when a patient comes for a catheterization, if we find a blockage, if we treat a blockage, patient goes home in six to eight hours. And mind you, my average patient's age is 72, 75. So I'm talking about 80 and 85 year old patients. They get through a blockage that was complex. They get it fixed through the wrist artery. They can sit up right away and they can go home after eight hours. So in Western world, there is a big push for early ambulation, early discharge, uh, which reduces the healthcare utilization and make the resources available for more patients. And at the same time, it's more better quality of life for patient that they get back to their home and not get affected by any of the nosocomial exposures. So these are some of the changes that I'm highlighting in the the advancement that has happened in 10 years, uh, trying to put it in a... So from the early um, experience of working in the cath lab, I was fortunate to get exposer, exposed to the new approach of doing the catheterization through the radial approach or through the wrist artery. And uh, my 20 years of career that I have uh, uh, done interventional cardiology, though I am doing all sorts of interventions including from the leg artery to the brain artery to the heart artery and even change the valves, etc., etc. But wrist artery catheterization has remained one of my important focus. I have seen patients who died because of bleeding. I have seen patients who suffered multi-organ injury because of severe bleeding. And that was the driving factor to focus on this approach because while there was a lot being done how to work in the heart artery and what are the devices we need to use in the heart artery, there was a little work that was happening in the space of how we get to the heart artery. And I spent a lot of time learning, relearning and researching uh, how we do this procedure through the wrist and how can we make this procedure more and more successful through the wrist artery. Because, you know, sometimes we talk, as a physician, we talk about, you know, the risk of complication is 1%, the chances of bleeding is 3%. If you think that way, that's only 3% out of 
100 people. But if you think about a patient that is suffering, for that patient and that family, it is a 100% effect. So when a patient who had a complex blockage unblocked, but they had a complication from bleeding, that patient has a 100% effect of that. So with that kind of a mindset, the goal, my always goal was to, how can we advance this wrist artery approach so more and more physician can use this approach to more and more patients. So my research was all about how can we use different medication like vasodilator medication, what happens to the artery, does the artery get trauma or not, how can we prevent this trauma, how can we make this procedure available for all patients and also make it easy for all physicians. So I spent a lot of time learning, relearning and teaching transarial approach. Um, we did work in the transarial endovascular intervention, so working on the leg arteries from the wrist. Uh, some of my early contribution was in that area. Also, transarial approach or approach of wrist artery to perform some of the structural heart intervention. So we did some uh, heart hole closure from the wrist artery. Uh, we did some uh, treatment of a leak around the mechanical or bioprosthetic valve, something we call paravalvular leak through the wrist artery. Uh, and uh, again, taught the same approach to the uh, multiple physician. Uh, so that has been my main focus is the arterial access and how can we make the arterial access safer and how can we make the safe arterial access available to all the patients. So based on my research, I came up with this uh, technology or the idea that we can improvise how we do the procedure. And I approached uh, Cordis uh, Cardinal Health Company with this idea and worked with their engineer in developing this new device called Railway Sheetless Access System. So Cordis, to my understanding, is one of the legendary company in the field of cardiology and interventional cardiology. And uh, the first balloon, the first coronary stent, uh, the first drug rating stent were all uh, came through that company. Uh, as far as um, Cardinal Health Court is uh, launching this product called Railway Seatless Access System in India. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, that device. What it does is basically it downsizes the device so that it can go through the wrist artery easier. Also, it prevents the trauma to the wrist artery when we are advancing the device through the small wrist artery. This is very pertinent for Indian patient population because every uh, lab that I have visited in India and have participated in procedure for patients, all these patients' radial artery is very small. Currently, the equipment that we are using in the radial artery were truly designed for the femoral artery approach. We use an introducer sheath that goes into the artery and through that we pass guide catheter to go to the heart. And then once we get into the heart, we deliver our balloon stent wire to deliver the therapy. What this device does, it takes the introducer sheath out. It allows your guide catheter to go straight into the artery and to the heart. And then you can deliver the therapy as you would do otherwise. So what it does is basically this outer entry device that we was used, which is about 33% larger, about two French larger than the inner device that we are using to get to the heart catheter. So this railway sheathless access system eliminates the need of the sheath completely and allows you to perform your procedure without the sheet using the same guide catheter that you would have used. Uh, Cardinal Health is very committed in advancing the transradial approach and uh, uh, as part of that, uh, they are launching this device uh, into uh, multiple different hospitals. Uh, we traveled through a few hospitals and did few procedures for patients where we uh, did use by the help of the interventional cardiologists in the lab this device to make the procedure successful. And this allows us to use larger bore guide catheters, so more complex coronary interventions like rotational atherectomy, bifurcation stenting, left main stenting. Those kind of complex procedures can be done through the wrist, even through small artery, because the seven French guide catheter, which is the largest catheter generally we use, uh, generally speaking, that's the large catheter that we use, is same size as a five French sheath. And because of that, you can perform more complex procedure through the wrist artery. And uh, that will basically advance the radial approach to the next level. So transradial approach is advancing and this will be uh, really more of a futuristic um, approach for the 
transidial approach for patients and it will allow more patients to have their procedure done successfully through the wrist artery. The other advantage is by downsizing this device as well as by preventing trauma to the artery using this device, the most important limitation of the transidial approach or doing the procedure through the wrist artery where the radial artery gets 100% blocked that can be reduced significantly. The radial artery goes into spasm that can be reduced significantly. So by downsizing and preventing trauma those two limitation of this wrist artery approach can be substantially reduced and in our experience of about 260 patients uh, this problem is almost eliminated. Thank you.